The Minister of Science and Innovation, Dr. Bladen Zamande, will table his 2024-25 uh, budget vote in Cape Town today. 9.4 billion rand has been allocated uh, to the department for the 2024-2025 financial year. Now, Science and in Innovation was previously under one department with higher education, but has now been separated under the new government. Let's look at uh, some of the key priorities in this term with the Minister, uh, Dr. Bladen Zamande. Uh, Minister, a good morning to you. Thank you so so much for joining us uh, really good to have you with us i want to start with what how, how you at the moment are dealing with the separation of the ministry right of course you've got uh, the new minister of higher education i'm keen to hear if you've had any interactions a handover process as she takes over higher education and uh, what do you make of the resources that you have now in the split department well good morning Nale, to you and your listeners and viewers and thanks for inviting me Firstly, yes, I've done my handover on higher education with Minister Ngabani. But what has been very important also in our handover is that the joint work that the two departments have been doing uh, must not be allowed to be abandoned because they're very important joint projects. For example, the presidential PhD program where we want to select some of our brightest doctoral and postdoctoral students to send them all over the world uh, to learn and get experience and come back and enrich uh, South Africa. That is a very important project. We have also got some joint research programs uh, that we are doing together with the Department of Higher Education and Training. For instance, we have got also an education and uh, innovation precinct in Imbali, in Pitamaris, back which is looking at forging a very close relationship between education, training, science, innovation, including partnership with industry and post-school institutions there. We, we want to make sure that, of course, we do not abandon those because the relationship between education and training and science and innovation mm. is quite close in, in, in many respects. So I am happy that we are going to be able to, to move forward together. Yeah, um, and of course, uh, uh, there's there's a lot that you're facing as well. The report that we've got at this point is 9.4 billion rand allocated for um, your department, which is science and innovation. Is that sufficient? I mean, how are you going to be cutting up that pie? Definitely, it's not sufficient, uh, Nalid. You know, uh, that is why our anchor, of course, in addressing whatever we have to address despite financial challenges is the decadal plan, which is our 10-year plan on science, technology, and innovation, 2022 to 2032, which involves very key priorities before I come back to issues of funding. Mm. For instance, we are prioritizing modernizing our economy in the area of mining, in the area of agriculture. For instance, one of the key challenges facing agriculture is climate change. So we need investment in science, technology, and innovation of how we, we protect our crops, how we protect our animals. That requires a lot of research. We are all going to be focusing on digital economies, which is the modern things now that we need to be teaching our young people on digital, as well as looking at things like the future of work, as well as how do we develop climate and infrastructure use innovation in light of floods and other inclement weather that is actually increasing. In so as funding is gone, it definitely, just under 9 billion is, is not enough for an important area of science, technology, and innovation for the future of our country and economy. And what we want to do, we are already now looking at deepening partnership with industry. That uh, we already have, by the way, a tax incentive system which rewards those industries and companies that are investing in science and innovation as a way of encouraging them. So they, they get a uh, tax rebates uh, for that. That is what, one of the things that we are already doing, and we want to continue with that particular kind of program. We are also looking at kind of new funding that is available around dealing with climate change and so on, and also how we leverage some of those funds 
in our multilateral and bilateral partnerships, you know, including BRICS and relationships that we have with the European Union and other countries to actually leverage more funds. So those are some of the things that we are actually looking at. And in fact, through our own innovation, we are quite convinced that we can be able that when you have new companies or new industries or new economic activities coming out of our own research products, we will be able to leverage funds uh, from that, whilst, of course, continuing to engage in government uh, to get uh, extra funds. Yeah. So those are some of the strategies that I will be talking to in my budget vote and some of my priorities as we start uh, this new seventh administration. And I imagine, Minister, that one of the greatest challenges that you'll be dealing with is, is one of IP, right? I know that you've, of course, talked about the establishment of the Technology Innovation Agency, the South African National Space Agency, which continues to make us proud uh, with uh, global partnerships in terms of uh, where space innovation understanding is. But intellectual property seemingly is still quite very, very much a, a bottleneck uh, where our knowledge economy is concerned. That is very high up knowledge in my own priorities, in the sense that we are concerned about what I call leakage in intellectual property. Lots of research products that have got the potential to be commercialized are still being stolen, actually, by more richer countries out of the African continent and out of South Africa. But even South Africa itself, we are concerned that people uh, come up with innovation, working under government-sponsored programs, but then go away and establish their own private initiatives, and then government doesn't benefit. I want to close that loophole. But of course, I'm, my priority is to increase intellectual property. Lots of research that is being done has got lots of commercial potential, but that has not been translated into what we call in, uh, patents, as you rightly say, intellectual property as you actually say. Those are some of the priorities that definitely I am actually having and going to be doing whatever we are doing, paying particular attention to harnessing the enormous talent that we have in South Africa for innovation, mm -hmm. especially from both young people as well as experienced and highly qualified people. But also in addition to that knowledge, there is lots of grassroots innovation in South Africa. Ordinary South Africans who come up with innovations, we are supporting and funding such initiatives because innovation does not only come from the high end of intellectual work, but also comes from uh, ordinary people, including work that we are doing with SMMEs, yeah. as well as indigenous knowledge systems, by the way. We have got lots of plants. We are the fifth most biodiverse country in the world that we have not researched. We are working with our herbalists, is Nyanga, so that we are able to study what they are using and see what kinds of new medicines or new beauty products, for that matter, that may be coming out of the lots of diverse of plants that we have in South Africa. Those yeah. things are actually a big priority for me as we start the seventh administration. Yeah, uh, uh, intellectual property that South Africans can feel, can own, but also feel that they own. I think that's important. Minister, if, yeah. if you'll allow me, I'd, I'd ask you now for us to <coughs> shift gears. And this is, of course, an important line to draw here where we say, okay, mm. we've spoken to you as Minister of Science and, and Innovation. If you'll allow me now to speak to you as chairperson of the SACP and put that hat on for a moment. Um, a lot has been happening. I mean, at the beginning of this week, you saw um, the SACP General Secretary, uh, Solima Baila, uh, coming out quite strongly against the ANC's decision to include the DA and the Freedom Front Plus in this GNU, uh, saying that um, uh, the, there are dominant factions within the ANC that are now neoliberal and in favor of austerity measures. I mean, a very strong tone coming out of the Secretary General of the SACP. As chairperson, do you hold that view that the ANC has gone the wrong direction in this GNU, even as you sit on the cabinet yourself? Now, lady, I hope that you are not asking me to, to do a parallel uh, commentary from my General Secretary. Our General Secretary articulated what he articulated yesterday. The SACP, even before the formation of the GNU, did raise his concerns about, for instance, participation uh, or coalition 
with parties like the Democratic Alliance, which is what the, the General Secretary was articulating yesterday. In saying so, the SACP did not say that we are dismissing, therefore, the government of national unity. What the General Secretary was emphasizing, which is important, is that we have to be very vigilant in the context of a GNU, in the context where we have to work with parties that ordinarily we wouldn't have preferred to actually work with. That does not mean that necessarily it means, therefore, parties like the DA are going to be setting the agenda. That is why the SACP had taken a solution that preference would have been a minority government with features of a government of national unity. In other words, government of your national unity is going to be a site of struggle. But at the same time, as a country, we are faced with the reality that the NC did not win a majority. And in that context, we are actually forced to work in new ways that we have actually not been able to work with. So what the general secretary is saying is calling caution, that we need to be vigilant, we need to be very strong, and the SACP, as a matter of fact, has taken a decision that much as there is this government of national unity, but we should be focusing also on mass mobilization of the working class in particular, so that the interests of the working class are not sacrificed in the process of this government of national unity. The SACP has not said, therefore, we should not participate in this government of national unity. At all. That's why we are participating. The SACP has said that communists must actually participate, but we need to make sure that we ensure that the neoliberal agenda does not become the dominant agenda in this government of national unity. Yeah, because the question, of course, Minister, uh, no, let me not call you Minister, let me call you Chairperson, because now we're speaking to you in your capacity with the SACP, is that um, the concern is whether or not the tripartite alliance was adequately heard and listened to in the run-up to these discussions with the uh, uh, members of the GNU, Solima Baila saying that, they, that the SACP simply was not listened to. I didn't hear the General Secretary saying that. We are definitely not very happy about the extent to which we were consulted on this particular matter, which is something that we've raised inside the Alliance. And there's been a commitment to the Alliance that we're actually going to engage further so that we are able to discuss. As a matter of fact, also in some provinces, there was hardly any consultation with the alliance. This is a matter that we have raised. As the SACP, our view is simply this, that it is in the interest of the ANC in particular and our allies and ourselves as allies that we must consult and we dare not sacrifice the tripartite alliance on the altar of a government of national unity. Okay, let me stay here, SACP, Chairperson. We quite... Yeah, yes. apologies, Chairperson. I'm running out of time. I need to bring this one in because VBS has come back into sharp focus. Padze Justice Bizzo, former SG of the SACP in Limpopo, has said that the SACP should pay back three million rand that was given to it by the VBS bank. He alleges that this money was paid as a conference bill owed to the SACP owed to Birchwood Hotel in 2017. What do you say to that? Does... Did SACP receive three million rand well, from VBS? Let me just dismiss that the individual we are talking about is speaking for himself. He's not speaking for the SACP or for anyone. You know, Naledi, it's a pity because the media just recycles an old story and we are not bothering to go back to what we said about that matter. The SACP did not take any money from the VBS. It was a food company that donated to our Congress who have actually said that and that money did not come from the VPS. Even the person who actually donated did say so. Even when you look at the affidavit, there's no allegation of corruption on the side of the SACP. But as the media, we are reciting the story. We are not going back to the statement of our central committee at the time, which explained clearly that there is no such. Even now, we are being asked, the story is being run again, and we are not referring to what we had said. This is a non-issue. It's a non-matter. The SACP took no money from VBS. The SACP stole no money from VBS. The money was donated by a company legitimately that we raised money from. And they themselves did say that they are not a front for the VBS. 
And even this affidavit, when you read it, it doesn't accuse the SACP of any corruption. Can we please urge the media to do justice and fairness to our viewers and listeners by going back and doing background research before recycling stories that actually have no credibility whatsoever? Okay. Uh, that the uh, chairperson of the SACP also earlier speaking to us in his capacity of Minister of uh, Science and Innovation, Blade Nzimande, is speaking to us there. All right.